Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you uh, to talk about June 29th, um, LOL, LOL League of Legends uh, DFS uh, slate. Let's, die, uh, let's dig deeper into this uh, uh, slate today as we have a four game slate. We have two games in China and two games in Korea. Um, so we're back to having a four game slates. Back to having four game slates starting today um, through Sunday, I believe. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, so yeah, let's. Without further ado, let's dive in. Um, I know the past several days with with the two gamers, you know, we've had pretty good success. So hopefully, we continue uh, with that. Um, and I have a pretty good lean on certain games today. So we'll see where that you know puts us. All right, in the LPL, um, let's get to those first because um, I think the kill upside is much greater um, for those matchup. So LPL, we have Rare Adam at minus 132 versus uh, Fun Plus Phoenix FPX at plus 105. Basically like a toss-up mat, you know, um, coin flip um, in terms of the odds. Rare Adam is a slight favorite. Um, both teams have been pretty bad uh, so far in the summer split. Um, so we'll, we'll dive into that here in a second. And then the second matchup in China is Weibo Gaming versus Ultra, Ultra Prime. Weibo Gaming and Ultra Prime, both teams are like me, middle of the pack teams, in my opinion, so far in the split. I know Weibo Gaming has uh, a much better roster, much better, much higher upside and potential to finish in the top third of the LPL in my opinion by the end of the split but they just have not shown me you know the greatest team plays uh that I've seen out of them before even in the spring split so these two games are interesting so let's look at their Rost starting lineups um Rare Adam is starting the same five um Strive in the middle Leanne and Jungle Leanne actually has been playing pretty well um, in the jungle position. Um, but everybody else has been kind of struggling in my opinion, and especially in the bottom lane, I boy and Yuyanja, um, just like their old days. Um, I don't think they're really playing the type of meta that they should be playing uh, a little more aggressive and they just sit back and farm and want to scale until the late in, late in the game. And that's not really optimal, uh, for this patch, in my opinion, the current meta for the game, and then they're going up against LWX and Hang and FPX, who themselves have not been playing well. But actually, Care, Clid, and Xiaolahu, the top half of the map, has been pretty good, in my opinion, for FPX. And I do think that's where the biggest difference and advantage will be in favor of FPX. Um, and I do think in the bottom lane, I'm not that scared of iBoy and Yuyanja, as mentioned. So really, as long as Clid um, controls the map and the jungle uh, pretty evenly with Leanne, which I think he will. Um, I know Leanne's stats are popping off in terms of like jungle control percentage, but Care and Xiaolea, who, in my opinion, have been playing better than Strive and Cube. I know Care has been up and down here, here in a little bit, um, but I do think Xiaolea, who has been nothing but really good. So... I do think this is where FPX should um, win. I think FPX has had a very rough stretch of games. Um, I know FPX had had to play the top, I think three of the top elite teams, in my opinion, like EDG and uh, Victory 5 and all that. So I do know that FPX has now it's getting to the, you know, uh, easier matchups like in Rare Atom, uh, where I think FPX should you know, get back to their old days where they're probably going to be like a middle of the pack team too with Clint and Karen and Shaliahu in the top half of the map. And I think LWX has, he played really, really well um, in the spring split. So I do think he will gain his, regain his form at some point in this, in this uh, split. And I want to get ahead of that curve. Um, I do think FPX is talented. Uh, compared to Rare Adams, more talented compared to Rare Adams uh, starting lineup here. So, yeah, I like FPX to upset Rare Adam here today. Um, I think that's going to be my upset call uh, for today's slate. And then the second matchup in China is Weibo Gaming and Ultra Prime. 
like I said, Weibo Gaming has not been playing well as a team, um, but I know S of FM and then Angel has been, have been playing pretty well. One thing and on, just like the Rare Adam bottom duo, they have been okay. Like they've shown, like I think one thing and on actually have shown me a little more than Ibo and Yuyanja have, but still at the same time, they are kind of like a middle of the pack AD carry support duo, in my opinion, in the LPL so far. And the shy in the top lane has been such a question mark, question mark. I know in the first like series that they played and he played really well. And I know he's been, per, per, you know, preferring uh, playing Kale where he would, you know, scale late in the game and same for one thing. And on. I think this whole team, like still, like I said, stuck in the previous metas where they just want to farm. Uh, they're perfectly fine without, you know, making any, you know, calls, or, you know, early or in the middle of the game where they just sit back and want to farm and get to the late game and hopefully they outscale the other team. So, and depending on the picks and bans, I think Weibo Gaming has, you know, actually had that backfire against them. So I know other teams have noticed that and have kind of picked champions against that, uh, you know, advantage that Weibo Gaming likes to play with. And I do think that same thing uh, is going to happen with Ultra Prime as long as um, uh, in the bottom lane, Elk and Shoutsy play okay. So, and I only say that because crying actually, I, I've been very criti uh, critical of crying before, especially in the spring split. Um, and then last year, uh, you know, um, for a different team in RNG, I believe. Um, Crying likes to play more of a utility support middle middle mid champions, but right now, I mean, that's perfectly fine. I think it fits it fits him very well. Um, I know Hacker is not one of my favorite junglers either. Um, S of FM is not one of my favorite junglers either, but Hacker, I think he's he's okay. I mean, I think he is probably a, toward the bottom of the quality junglers um, in the LPL. And then Zoom has been okay too. He's not the same Zoom, you know, that we know of um, that used to play for JD Gaming, JDG. Um, so I do think there are some question marks here throughout Ultra Prime's roster, but I actually do believe that Ultra Prime has been playing better as a team, like in team fights and stuff, where I've watched them play compared to Weibo Gaming. I do think individual laning wise, I think Weibo Gaming is better um, overall. Um, maybe with the exception of the bottom lane. Um, and I do think Elk and Shoutsy, their their form, you know, will come up as well at some point in the split split. And I want to get get ahead of that as well. Um, but in this meta, I mean, as long as I, I unless I see Weibo Gaming make adjustments and make plays, try to make plays around objectives and set up. Uh, team fights in their in their favor, which I have not seen uh, many times this split so far. I th I can definitely see a see a see a um, situation where Ultra Prime can upset Weibo Gaming here today. Um, Weibo Gaming I think should win just based on the stats and the laning phase, but I think Ultra Prime plays better as a team unit, so I do think that can happen. So. I think I'm, I'm still kind of torn as to what my final prediction is going to be. I think Weibo Gaming should win, but I think Ultra Prime definitely has a good shot, I think. Um, and then between the two LPL matchups, um, I, I saw the stats, I think, here. 24.5. Um, I think Weibo Gaming and Ultra Prime should be a more bloody matchup compared to Rare Adam FPX. Um, so we'll see if you are going with Weibo Gaming. Yeah, I think that should be the bloodiest matchup you know among all four matchups today in the lck um it's a little more lopsided at least uh vegas odd wise odds wise um drx against lsb sandbox and then t1 versus kwangdong freaks kdf um as you know drx has is undefeated and t1 is undefeated um here in the uh, summer split drx has been uh playing very well um, I know a lot of experts had DRX in one of their top four teams to uh, make to the LCK playoffs, um, obviously along with T1, um, but DRX actually has been 
very solid, especially in the top half of the map. I know Deft and Barrel in the bottom lane here um, were playing really well in the in the spring split, um, but then Kingen and Piosik and Zika would struggle in the top half of the map in the spring split, and that was the cause for their downfall at times in the spring split. But so far in the summer split, yeah, I mean, I actually think Kingen, Piosik, and Zika, the top half of the map for DRX, has been carrying the load for that team. Actually, I have seen a, you know some struggles for Deft and Barrel here in the summer split so far, but I think that may be caused by the fact that Deft had to start the split um, by playing remotely because he had COVID. Um, but now that with the with one game back under his belt, um, do, you know, playing in person in front of the crowd, I do think that will help them. Eventually, they'll regain the form that they, you know, they are capable of. And, you know, the form came up, like I said, for Kingen and Piosik and Zika. And that's that's a huge plus. And frankly, that is where um, I do think um, DRX will definitely have a huge advantage over Dove, Croco, and Closer there. I think Croco, I think Sandbox goes as Croco goes. Um, Croco is a very good jungler, very young and talented. Um, he can carry carry a team at least and maybe in one game, maybe in a series, but um, he needs help from other, you know, his teammates. And Prince actually had a really good solid uh, first series, I believe, in the LCK summer split. But going up against experienced depth and barrel, I don't know if that, you know, if Prince will snow, be able to snowball from there. So I really do think a lot of the heavy pressure and burden will be on Croco's performance today. Um, I can definitely see Sandbox maybe pull a game, um, and um, but at the at the end of the day, I think DRX will win the series two to one, just based on their recent form, and based on the fact that they are a better team fighting team in my opinion. And Sandbox, yeah, I mean Sandbox likes to fight. Um, they give up a lot of deaths so far um, in the summer split and the spring split. Um, so I do think DRX's kill upside is pretty good um compare comparatively um <laughs> compared to lck uh teams i guess in general um so i do think drx is a pretty good play if you think drx will you know win um but at the same time i, I don't know i don't know if you think that drx if you don't think drx will win two to zero maybe drx wins two to one um there's a good chance that Weibo gaming can outscore drx here today <laughs> or ultra prime depending on where what, what your prediction is for that matchup all right last game of the slate that's pretty simple t1 um i know they were struggling a little bit uh here early in the summer split even though they won all of their games <laughs> um last game out last time out i watched t1's last series they are back to you know their top form peak uh basically um, they should win this. That's they. That's why they are minus 1,800 favorite. Guangdong Freaks, I mean, Teddy has been carrying a load for that team, but everybody else's form has been horrible. Um, I know especially Elam and Fate. Um, I know Keen, he's a good player, but going up and going up against Zeus, uh, Zeus um, in uh, uh, T1, um, I think that's going to be a tall task for Keen to uh, carry a load as well. And then one thing I would like, like to note is for Guangdong Freaks, if you are somehow, uh, for some reason, are stacking uh, players from KDF, their support uh, position has been in and out uh, between, it has been shared by, with Hoyt, Hoyt and Moham. Um, so, you know, just FYI, if you are playing the support position for Guangdong Freaks um, in GBP, um, make sure, you know, you understand that substitution risk there potentially. But yeah, so I think the kill upside amongst the Korean matchups, um, I believe, is about the same. Actually, T1's matchup, sorry, that's not the same. It's it's the same uh, by uh, just looking at the Vegas odds. But T1 Guangdong Freaks should be higher and more bloody, and you know, in terms of uh, kill upside there, um, and then DRX Sandbox. So DRX Sandbox actually is rated as the lowest kill upside matchup here on the on the day today. Um, I know that Weibo Gaming and Ultra Prime, um, the CKPM, the combined kills per minute uh, metric is the highest um, compared to uh, Rare Atom. And then, rare, so Rare Atom FPX would be second. 
then Sandbox, uh, no, sorry, D1 Quantum Freaks will be third, and then Sandbox DRX will be fourth in terms of, uh, you know, the kill upside potential. And yeah, so based on these predictions, I do think T1s, uh, just based on the matchup, I do think owners should dominate here today in that matchup. And then Teddy doesn't die that much, so maybe not Gumuyushi today, but maybe Zeus and Owner at the top half. Um, maybe those are the two guys that I really like to go over the kill, kill threshold. Um, in terms of DRX, I don't really know if I like Deft because he likes to play Senna, like more of a supporting AD carry champion, and he doesn't get enough kills at times. Um, Zika, yeah, going up against the aggressive closer, I do, I do like Zika, and then Kingen, Kingen going up against Dove, uh, Dove. I think Kingen and Zika are two, my two favorite guys there. And then Weibo Gaming, if you think they'll win, yeah, I mean, it has to go with Crying does not die often, so I'll have to go with one thing if you or one thing and SOFM because the jungle control percentage is much higher for Weibo Gaming, and then one thing over Elk because one thing likes to late scale like i said and get a lot of kills you know toward late in the game and rare adam fpx like i said i'm picking fpx to upset um rare adam today and for fpx i'm gonna have to go with probably the bottom half of the matchup here today care lwx and hang to go over the kills. And my favorite would be LWX here today to bounce back against a weaker opponent and rare Adam uh, to rack up a lot of kills for LWX today here today. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at DFS Chan. Um, otherwise, good luck out there and let's go League of Legends. Have a good one. Bye.